Genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 118 of 15 Minutes of Genius. We just had a great last episode with the crew from MDS. If you missed it, make sure to re-log on, go on LinkedIn, go on YouTube, go on Apple Podcasts, go on Spotify, and search for Midday Squares, and you will find it. Uh, we had all three founders, co-founders on, uh, Jake, Les, and Nick. So awesome, awesome show. But now let's get to our guest. But before we do, big plug to Mark Nicholas, Mark Studios.net. He is our producer. He is our man. He's drinking a cup of tea right now. Quite like bourgeois, bourgeoisie-ish. Yeah, that makes sense, right? There you go. <laughs> bourgeoisie, one like that. Bourgeoisie. All right, all heart. All right, so uh, anyway, that's our guy, Mark Nicholas, Mark Anneman, HadBeatStudios.net. Make sure to reach out to him. He can help you with podcasts, photos, videos, editing. He has a great studio here. It's amazing. I'm not doing this in my basement. Could never pull this off. All right, so our guest, without further ado, is Adam Deramo. He is the founder and CEO of Awake Chocolate, which is also based in uh, in Canada, Toronto, just like MDS. So a lot of cool chocolate brands coming out of Canada. A little bit about Awake. Awake was created to meet the need for a caffeinated energy product with truly delicious taste. Their founders believe that consumers shouldn't have to settle for bitter, funky-tasting beverages to get that pick-me-up that so many of us are looking for. The result? Awake merges the great taste of premium chocolate with pick-me-up with a pick-me-up of a 250 milliliter energy drink, yuck, or a cup of coffee. Perfect for when you need to get stuff done and don't have the energy to do it. Sounds really good to me. So Adam, how's it going? Good, Alex. Uh, thanks for having me on and thanks also for getting my last name right. Most people don't. So I think that's proof that uh, you drink enough smoothies and you will in fact turn into a genius. Exactly. That's that's the claim to my name is that I can pronounce other people's last names correctly. So I'm living up to what my hat says. <laughs> so anyway. For sure. Well, so let's get into not only being a genius, but to be genius, you got to be awake. So this is a cool product. And what's really awesome about it is when I first, you know, because we schedule, you know, we have a scheduler that gets people on. My scheduler said, oh, we're bringing on awake chocolate. And the first thing in my head was the owl. Like I knew right away the association of the yeah. owl, the brand, the name, which is pretty powerful that I just, I knew it right away. So uh, doesn't take a genius to know an owl is awake at night, uh, but maybe tell us about the evolution of forming this brand, how you really narrowed down and selected, number one, what you wanted to do, like why you wanted to get into a kind of a caffeinated chocolate, uh, filling that need and also behind the branding and uh, how that came to be. So let's go into that story. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's a two-part answer. One is, how did we get to starting a brand at all? And, um, you know, I, I'm fortunate that I started uh, Awake eight years ago now with two great co-founders. We were all career packaged food and beverage guys. We, we were working on, for PepsiCo in uh, late 2010. We were out for a lunch. And I had been feeling just like a burning passion that I wanted to start something of my own. And I mentioned it to my two co-founders, Matt and Dan. And uh, within 10 seconds, they both said, I feel the exact same way. And we agreed right then and there, we'd do it together and we never looked back. And, you know, I think that's relevant because maybe it says something about entrepreneurs, which is that uh, we're super passionate. Uh, about what we do and passionate about building businesses in general. I don't know if that rings true for you, Alex, but uh, it's been my experience in, in the founders that I've met. And I think it's the reason we could agree to make such a big decision in less than 10 seconds and, and never turn back from it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, there's the, they call it the aha moment. You're just like that, you know, for us, it was, you know, me discovering whole coconut in someone's kitchen, you know, a vegan chef. Uh, yeah. the meat in the water from the coconut blended. And I'm like, this is genius. It was like, in a second, I knew it was a great idea. And usually that's how ideas happen. There's like this buildup of experiences and 
different pathways. And it might take 10 years, might take five years, might take one year. But in an instance, you know that it's a really great idea. So it sounds like it was an aha moment. And you're also filling a need yeah. as well. So that's pretty cool. A hundred percent. Yeah. We decided we were going to build something together and uh, be in CPG guys. We knew it would be in the CPG space. And so the one thing we agreed on is let's solve for an unmet need. And it so happened that we had all done work around the uh, energy drink categories and the coffee categories. And because of that, we knew there were quite a few people out there who were super busy, uh, professed a need for energy, and yet weren't buying anything to satisfy that need. And when you ask them why, um, almost without exception, the answer is because I can't find anything that I like the taste of. Uh, Coffee is way too bitter. Uh, energy drinks taste kind of weird. I don't know if I really trust them. And to us, that didn't really make sense. Like how many other product categories or product benefits can you think of where you have to do something you don't like, drink something that tastes bitter in order to get a benefit that you do like, which is that feeling of invigoration. And, um, you know, all of us working together in a, a huge company, we knew that the way a big company would address that problem is by trying to make a, a slightly better tasting cup of coffee or a slightly better tasting energy drink. And, um, you know, I think this also says something about ups because a lot of times where big companies are amazing at do better, um, small companies often contribute with do different. And so we looked at it and said, like, why does it have to be a beverage at all? Uh, couldn't we develop something that truly tasted amazing? if we flip this thing around and made it food form, uh, an energy snack. At the time, there was absolutely nothing like this uh, in the marketplace. This was 2011. And so, you know, in stereotypical startup fashion, we just started digging in uh, nights and weekends while we were doing our full-time jobs, internet research, calling people that we knew, looking around, <laughs> reading scientific papers about ingredients, and, uh, you know, in fairly short order, we discovered that there were ingredients out there and there were food technologies out there that sounded like they could probably solve this issue. And, uh, you know, we went down a, a journey of trying to network and learn things uh, about these ingredients and how to use them. And um, we did plenty of prototyping, probably consumed enough uh, caffeine along the way to, to kill a large farm animal, but we all made it through. <laughs> and um, Take one the for the team. Of, yeah. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. You know, true story. Um, by fortunate coincidence, uh, a friend's dad was a food engineer by background and he knew a ton of stuff about the chocolate business in particular. And uh, he volunteered to supervise one of our, our baking sessions. And uh, we tried a lot of prototypes that day. And at a certain point, he looked at us and said, I got to sit down. I think I'm having a heart attack. Um, obviously, he wasn't. That's what makes the story funny. Uh, but it just testifies to the fact that we were super caffeinated and really energized. At the end of that process, though, trial and error, we developed uh, you know, what people would call a minimum viable product. We knew we could make. Uh, this chocolate bar that had the pick-me-up of a cup of coffee, but no caffeine bitterness at all. That's really the magic. Like we developed this energy chocolate snack that's truly enjoyable to eat. Yeah. And that's, one, one thing, like, just that's a, the North Star of our brand. Absolutely. And, um, you know, just looking at the packaging, super recognizable, love the colors. So let's get into, I, I love the story as well, right? Where Americans, people in general across the world are, they want caffeine. They basically want to mm -hmm. keep their day going and stay energized. And yeah, it's tough for me because I'm highly sensitive to caffeine. So instead of having like a cup of coffee, I have chocolate, you know, or cacao or chocolate. Mm -hmm. So I could have your bar because it's not like I'm, you know, drinking coffee where it's like it goes straight to my bloodstream, right? It's like it kind of... It's a little more, it's less jitters to have a product like yours. So to get into kind of that side, because it's a bar, because it has fats in it and all these other things, it's more of like kind of a steady caffeination, right? You're not going to be too high. You're not going to be too jittery. Is that is that right? The experience of having this bar? I, 
that's been my experience. And a lot of people say that to us. I mean, you know, if you want to get into like food chemistry, the caffeine in our bar works the same way as it would in a cup of coffee, but it tends to be the case that uh, it's absorbed more quickly if you drink it. Right. And uh, also our caffeine is uh, in micro encapsulated, which is it's one of the features of our product that allows us to deliver outstanding taste with no bitterness. And um, because of that, I think there's a slower onset. The invigoration lasts for just as long as it would if you had uh, a cup of coffee or an energy drink. But, you know, one of the benefits, which, which you kind of alluded to, is when you eat our bar or one of our bites, you know exactly how much caffeine you're getting. You drink a cup of coffee or an energy drink, like not always the case. And sometimes the caffeine count in those beverages are super high, like way higher than most people would think. Mm -hmm. But but with our bars, you're getting in a full-size bar, 100 milligrams of caffeine, or, or in one of our bite-sized pieces, you're getting 50. So yep. you know exactly how much you're getting. And like you said, the onset's a little slower. Yeah, it's like you're you're dosing in a way, not to not to compare it to like, you know, a CBD product or something, but you're essentially dosing how much caffeine you need at the same time. Yeah. So I want I want to get into uh, before we run out of time. You know, entrepreneurs watch this show, we get a few thousand views, sometimes more. And mm -hmm. um want to get into you've had this brand for now 10 years, right? You said 2011. I think you said 8 years, right? 8 years. Yeah, it, well, yeah. we were like we were two years basically from the launch where we agreed we'd do it to actually right. bringing it to launching market. it. That, then that's about right. A lot of right. steps. Yeah, a yeah. lot of steps in between foods, you know, chemistry, packaging, name, like for anyone. Fundraising. Fundraising, all the fun you know, yeah. um, going to friends and family or maybe bigger than that, depending on where you want to go with it. But the main thing that um, I want to communicate to anyone who has not started a food and beverage business when you see something like Awake on the shelf or something like Genius or something like Rind or any kind of product on the shelf, there is so much effort that goes into making that, to actually getting that product to the shelf. Not only from food science and packaging and money, but then having to, you know, having to sell the product into the store, which mm -hmm. sometimes for large accounts, you have to wait a year to even do that. So I have even more respect than, you know, before starting this business, you know, it's uh, genius juice, more uh, the utmost respect for any food and beverage entrepreneur on how hard it is <laughs> to literally get a product from an ideation to the shelf. But you've been doing this a while. You're eight years in, yeah. you know, genius juice. We're seven years in a lot of people think we're a younger brand, but been around since 2014, you 2013 started around the same time. What is your plan with the company, right? You're kind of in this mode where you know, the sales, they're good. You know, they, I'm sure they're still going up every year online, yep. new, new locations, new accounts. What's your long-term plan with Awake? Do you want to keep it? Do you want to eventually be acquired? Tell us more about your, your strategy there, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, like, unfortunately, I'm going to answer with a bit of a non-answer. <laughs> okay. uh, and, and that is that uh, my co-founders and I have always strived to have options. So we have the opinion that if you build a good enough business, you'll have options. It might be attractive to an acquirer. And if it is, you really have to think about that. Um, or it might produce cash flow and fund a really nice lifestyle. And that would be great too. Um, what we really have ambition for in the short term is just growing household penetration, uh, allowing awake to me known by more and more consumers because there's a lot of use cases for it and you know the feedback we get from consumers who buy our brand and use it beneficially is so rewarding for us that we just want to keep growing and growing and growing the brand and you know we'll take care of all the financial aspects of it along the way and hopefully that takes us to a place where we do have options Love it. I think um, I, I'm going to razz you a little bit, okay? Because okay. I like love to have fun on the show. Yeah. That was the perfect pivot, like you were on the debate stage running for president. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, let me answer that. And then like, you know, 20 <laughs> seconds later, you're talking about the benefits of the product. And before I know it, you're answering the question without actually answering it, which is fine. But <laughs> it was so gracefully done, like, hats off to you on that one like you, you if you run for what? president you have you have you have my vote you have my vote 
Hey, I'm <laughs> I'm Canadian, so there's zero chance that that can happen. Prime Minister, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's a job anybody really wants. No. Um, but the funny thing about that is there's, you know, there's a million things about the business where I could give you a black and white answer. We have like a really definitive stance, but we've always strived for optionality. It's a strange goal, but that's what we were chasing. What, what is, what is optionality? Last question on the subject. Yeah. Just like, you know, the ability to choose your own path I, for us and, and for it to be like financially helpful. That's the position we want to be in. We feel like if you have options, that's how you're going to maximize your return. Exactly. And as you said, when you build a great company that's sustainable, where you're not relying on too many different VCs or private equity, and you can really make your own decisions, it does give yep. you those options. You can continue the company. You're not under heavy stress to have to build and sell a company within two years, right? You can go at your own pace. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's helpful, right? Like, don't get me wrong. I love investors. I, I think VCs are important and great, but yes. sometimes a founder's interests and, a, and an investor's interests are not perfectly aligned. It's, so, hard, it's hard to find that, that partnership, the, the right, you know, yeah, like I agree with you. When you find the right investor where they can mm -hmm. add value, not only capital, but value and guidance and insight, and they're most likely going to have, you know, a seat on the board, you're married to yep. them. You know, and Agreed. it better be a great relationship. You both better be aligned. And I've seen huge successes where the investors are aligned with the brand and the founders, and it goes great. Other times, uh, the founders uh, take the wrong money, you know, because it's mm -hmm. money. And they have a partner that may not, it's not a bad person, but they're just not aligned with the company's vision. So it can really go both ways. So I guess my advice is don't take money for the sake of taking money. Get, a get smart money, get the right money if you're going to raise capital. That's my advice. Agreed. And like bring it full circle. Like, it it's so hard to start one of these businesses as a founder that you owe it to yourself to be choiceful about who you work with. Exactly. You got to be happy at the end of the day, right? If you're not loving what you yep. do, what's really the point of it? And if you, you don't no want chance at working hard enough. <laughs> exactly. If you don't love it. Yeah, you're going to be hitting your head against a, a wall. Or just do just do what we did at Genius Juice, uh, raise online, you know, from crowdfunding. That's another way to do it, right? Instead of having yeah. one investor write a $2 million check, you have 3,000 investors write a $300 check or whatever that is. So anyway, um, let's go to our next segment, which is on my phone, okay. which is glad we're wide awake for this one because this is called Rapid Fire Questions. Rapid fire questions. All right. So the fact that you're caffeinated, the fact that you're awake, focused, you got the the active ingredients in coffee. What are they called? I don't even know what they're called. What actually gives the caffeine in coffee? Is it just caffeine? That's an obvious question, right? Yeah, the, so that the caffeine is naturally occurring in the coffee bean. There you go. As yeah. you can tell, not so genius when it comes to coffee on my, I don't think we're ever going to come out with a coffee line because I don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife loves coffee. She loves pour overs and like all that kind of stuff, but uh, just very foreign to me. All right. So I'm ask you a bunch of questions, get a bunch of answers. Okay. Let's do this. For music, which decade is the best for you? 70s, 80s, or 90s? I got to go uh, 90s, but uh, I do love me some 80s synthesizer music from time to time, too. Like, uh, you, do you like the Human League with all the synthesizers yeah. and everything? Yeah. 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 Don't you love me? Da, 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 da. <laughs> all right. So I just listened on the way over. That's why I thought of that. Uh, what do you do for exercise? Kettlebells and jumping jacks. It's pretty love that. low tech. That works. It's, uh, I guess they call it like the caveman workout. All you need is a, like a, a piece of metal and yourself and you can do it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So easy. A caveman can do it. All right. So, uh, next question, movie you can watch an unlimited amount of times. Old school, uh, for sure. Will Ferrell. Love it. Yeah. Something about Mary. Another one. Yep. That's a good like one. Too. laugh. Yeah, that's a really. Do you like? Uh, you must love Step Brothers, then, 
right? The Judd, anything oh Judd goodness. Apatow, you probably love. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's a freaking Catalina wine mixer. All right. Exactly. Uh, chocolate or vanilla? Oh, it's got to be chocolate. Favorite country to travel to? You know, I'm relatively untraveled. I um, actually love the United States. So I'm going to say the U.S. Cool. All right. I, I vouch for that one. So uh, favorite Star Wars character? Got to be uh, Luke. Although, yep. you know, I'll give a shout out to uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi too. No one ever says Obi-Wan, but he was, he's the guy that trained Luke, basically. So, and he, yeah, he's a great uh, like teacher, mentor, and badass in his own right. Exactly. Exactly. I love the, I love the part where he, he's uh, fighting Darth Vader uh, in the first one, I believe. And then he decides to basically kill himself because he's stronger as a ghost. Like, yeah, with the force for Luke. Like, I love that part where Darth Vader just hit him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, classic. What does he say, if you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine? Exactly. Something like that. Wow. I think you actually verbatim just said what he said. And he, yeah. you only, you're a master of evil, Doth. All right. <laughs> <laughs> with the Alec Guinness British accent. Yeah. All right. Uh, what is your spirit animal? Oh, it's, it's got to be an owl. Doing that Great. wrong. That is an answer that was much expected. Do you yeah. like to drive an SUV, a coupe, or a truck? I'm a truck guy. Love it. For food, salty or sweet? I like them both. You know, I, I'm probably a bit more salty than sweet, but when you have a chocolate company, you know, you, you got to live in both worlds. Exactly. And you have like the coffee, which is more of the savory. You have the chocolate, more of the sweet. So nice combo there. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, favorite day of the week and why? Or favorite night of the week? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, Saturday, because uh, I love to watch college football. So I'm going with Saturday. Nice. One of my friends is from Ohio, always shows up dressed like to the nines, Buckeyes, like just like red oh. everything, O everywhere. Yeah. That's so interestingly enough, I bleed maize and blue. So we'd get You're... along amazingly well. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you're sarcastic or not, because I know nothing about part, no, You're being sarcastic, right? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Michigan and, uh, they're Michigan like rivals. Ohio are, yeah. Huge Got rivals. It. Like Michigan yeah. blue, Ohio State red. It's like the classic yeah. battle, you know, Pepsi, exactly. Coke. All right. So you're Pepsi. So Pepsi is blue. Yep. There you go. It all comes exactly. full circle. All right. So uh, <laughs> Uber or Lyft? Uber. LeBron James, Michael Jordan, or Kobe? MJ, hands down. All the way. Terminator 1 or Terminator 2? I'm going Terminator 2. Me too. Favorite yeah. food or drink if you're stuck on a deserted island at night and you cannot choose Genius Juice and you cannot choose your own chocolate bar awake? Oh, man. Uh, well, if I can't have Genius Juice or awake, I'm going to go uh, bone-in ribeye. Bone-in ribeye. Nice. Any sides to that or just straight-up ribeye? Uh, yeah, just uh, straight-up ribeye cooked on the fire. Love it. Exactly. It's like Castaway. I've created fire. All right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, that is rapid fire questions right. with Adam, the man, and uh, he is the co-founder of Awake Chocolate. So, um, yeah, man, thanks for joining us at night. I can see why uh, probably uh, a key time, a great time for you to join us at night on 15 Minutes of Genius worked out well for you and your lifestyle. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us in episode 118 and have a wonderful night if you get some sleep. I'm not sure if you sleep at night. Yeah, I do. Unlike, uh, <laughs> unlike our brand owl. I do. <laughs> thanks so much for having me. You got it, brother. All right. Take good care. All right. So that's episode 118 of 15 Minutes of Genius. Big plug to Mark Nicholas, Mark Annam and HighBeatStudios.net for all your editing desires. He is awesome. Like really just reach out to him. 
you do podcasts. What would you say is your strongest thing that you do? Eat. Okay. He can help you eat. You're going to have lunch with him. So that's that's part of his skill set. It comes with the package. So anyway, episode 118 in the books. And uh, let's see. One last thing. Stay awake and genius, my friends. Genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you. 